I mean, you you cannot be in this order and not be smart about the African spirituality and the Yoruba tradition. I mean, it's just impossible. And too much information is given. The concept. I mean, everything is just like brother uh, Jeffrey said. I, I mean, I could just go on and on. It's just absolutely wonderful. And the tools that are provided, um, the grassroots of divine power, the book provides so much information to get you started. And you know, remove the um, confusion. It is. It's just. It's just awesome. I mean, Ashe, and thank you, Sister Brother Jeffrey. Uh, what do you have to add to that uh, as far as your personal experience since being inside? I guess I could say, you know, it, it was like a door opening, and, and I'm now I'm at home, so to speak. Uh, it, like, the, like she said, it, it's been great. It's, everything has been just, it's unexplainable. It's just great. Ashe, Ashe, and Brother Damon. Um, I guess I'll add to that. One one thing I found here is there's no I always call it no fluff, no filler. There's no there's no fluff about it, you know, and, and as you start practicing you immediately see results. I say it. I say. You know, um you all uh I have to apologize for the lack of time that we have. Um and you each of you all sound most intriguing, and we would love to keep talking and talking, but we have the we have the timetable and the schedule to deal with. Um, but we hope that you hang around, and who knows, maybe on the back end of the program we'll have more time and we can get back to some, some of the ex- exciting and informational things that you're talking about. But first, um, here's a short one-minute break to give the audience a chance to get your heads on right and be prepared to, to listen to um, the incredible Dr. Africa talk about his new book and some of the things that he is doing. So uh, you get ready for that, and so as you get ready for that, uh, we will return. A New Nation and Udemy would like to offer an amazing one-time opportunity From now until November 29th at 1159 Pacific Standard Time, a new spiritual training, Phase 1, will be discounted up to 75% by using the discount code BLACKFRIDAY13. That is the words Black and Friday and the number 13. uh, A new family's children and adults and that sort of thing. Life changing. And uh, people began to ask me to come out and speak and things of that sort. So I started giving little talks at mosques and churches and synagogues and on radio and started writing articles and eventually um, I wrote a book called African Holistic Health. Um, and for some reason, people started buying it. It surprised me. And it became a bestseller and it's still a best selling book. Um, hey, I say. I think I should do. Yes, it is, and, and we thank you for that every day. But now you have a new book out, and it's different in many ways than the books you've been doing in the past. It's called The Complete Textbook of Holistic Self-Diagnosis, and, um, and you've co-written it with um, Melanie D. Stevenson. Uh, am I correct on that information so far? Uh, so far... Yeah, my, my my wife, I mean, Dr. Stevenson is my wife, and she types it in and scans the drawings and things of that sort for me, and that's how it basically got out. Uh, but I had to do a lot of drawing and artwork, which I really didn't want to do. But I had to do that because these artists and illustrators were just charging too much money. The book is on how to diagnose yourself and learn all the languages that the body uses to tell you something is wrong, so you know how to diagnose the eyes, the tongue, the teeth, the hair, the eyebrow, the hair, the fingernails, toenails, the neck, the shoulder, um, feet, um, acupuncture meridians. I teach you with illustrations how to diagnose yourself and find out what's wrong. I say, I say, now that sounds like um, a real step up in what usually is presented to the public. Uh, Usually it's just uh, a lot of information, and if you have this problem, or if you know someone with this problem, here's what you can do about it. But uh, th- this is uh, this is a step up, and in addition to to just the change in the text, 
there's a change in how you've produced this uh, book and um, how you're publishing it and sending it out to the public. Am I right? Yes, uh, my other books are basically uh, owned by thieves, publishers, as you call them. And I haven't been paid for my other works in about five or six years or so. And I got tired of going from court to court to get my money, so this time I just totally self-published it. I self-published all my books first before I gave them to a publisher or a thief, as they actually are. And this time I didn't give it to any publisher. I just did it solely by myself. With my wife's help, of course, uh, I didn't do it alone. So I self-published totally. Balance. Um, this is incredible. Eyes. This is incredible. Uh, you're news approaching the body and nutrition a whole different way because you're approaching it as property of God and food as a communion with God. I don't see any separation myself. So for for people that like for me to separate language, I will. Uh, you can see chemistry in the body, biology, astronomy, and all of those things are in the body. The body is an astrological instrument. It's no separation. It's just another language you're using to be connected to God, yourself, and nature. Ashe, we thank you for that. Uh, doctor, uh, we also know that you have a, a series of DVDs out and audios, and you sell certain products on yourself. Um, can we feel safe getting the DVDs, or are you... Um, having the same issues with the producer of the DVDs that you have and with the publisher of some of your past books? Um, the DVDs are pirated all over the world, so I'm not even into that conversation. I'm up DVDs in England, South America, Africa. I have nothing to do with all that stuff. You can get things from me, or you can get it where you can get it. I have no problems with the DVD stuff. I I can't control that. They pirated it. Even when I was in Guyana, they were selling my DVDs on the street. So I have nothing to do with that at all. Uh, I advise people to get information wherever you can get it. Stan for it. Get it. I took a class with a Nazi in Germany to get the information. Uh, get it wherever you can. But nonetheless, I, people can get DVDs from me and, and supplements from me. But I suggest you... Take a stand and fight where the hell you are if you want to win in this war. Um, well, with that in mind, Doctor, would you tell us where the audience can contact you and get your products directly from you before we go any further? And we will repeat this information throughout. Okay. Uh, they can go to my site, byelaafrica.com. And if you want to get my book, you go to laelaafrican.com forward slash health diagnosis. And that gets to my holistic self-diagnosing book. And other things, you can just email me at laelaafrica at juno, J-U-N-O dot com. And they can get, that way they can get consultations or supplements or DVDs and things of that sort. Ashe, uh, and of course, no, your name is spelled in the L L A. We do have some DNA in common, just like all trees have DNA in common. That's how. They, that's why they call trees, and all rats have DNA in common. That's why they call rats. So we do have DNA in common, but we are not physiologically related to them in that, in that sense at all. So what we're looking at is two different types of melanin. Their melanin is sulfur sentence. Sulfur is what you call a rotten egg smell. You smell it when their hair gets wet. They have more sulfur and ammonia in their body because they're biochemically different from black people. Melanin has a sweet kind of smell. So it has a fruity kind of smell. So it presents a different smell. Each race smells different. East Indians smell different from Arabs. They all smell different. And we smell different to them. We, we just don't know that. <laughs> that. We do smell different. And the difference is a melanin-based difference. Because melanin causes the ability of the body to hold vitamins and minerals in the system. So we hold in a, more vitamins and minerals in our system. And the Europeans are holding the least amount of vitamins and minerals in their system because melanin causes things to cluster. That's why we combine spirituality with a thought with a behavior. We do drop a spoon in the kitchen. We say, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus. We automatically cluster or holistically think of spirituality, connection to our behavior and thoughts. 
Oh my God! Why did I say that? We automatically attach spirituality to things, and that's the property of melanin to cluster to make a village out of things. Oh shit! And I'm just asking. Now, in our community, many of us parents uh, have no the strange developmental issues of early onset puberty with our children. Uh, what would you suggest to the African family on ways to decrease our consumption of GMO food, gen- genetically modified foods? I do have a book called Raising Black Children, and that teaches you parenting skill. Whether you're a parent or not, you have to know these skills to communicate to children, and it teaches you the, the skills you need to be a parent, to be a parent to yourself, to nurture yourself to love yourself, to talk to yourself. It's actually the skills on how to be a human being. But I call the book Raising Black Children because that's a social term and people can connect to it, but it teaches you how to raise yourself by following the rules of my art. It teaches you how to break behaviors, be it a behavior of masturbation, be it a behavior of lying and stealing. It teaches you how to break behaviors. It's a child's to use the moral and judgment and censoring process, which we call the frontal lobe of the brain. So they will masturbate, put rings in their vagina, on their penis and stuff, because they're not looking at the morality of the body, because they, they are no longer using that part of the brain as much. They're using the imaging part of the brain. And the computer is an imaging machine. They don't correct the word on the screen because it's wrong. They correct the word on the screen because it's not the right image. We're missing the whole point of imaging machines. That is a factor, too, in their ability to comprehend what these so-called adults are saying about the wisdom of their ancestors, the imaging children. There's an image on those cash registers, not the price. There's an image of a hamburger, and these kids are pressing the image to ring up a sale. Ah, Shay, I have another question here. Uh, well, how does the food have an effect on our spiritual health? Well, I only know of one food that's grown in nature without herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers. That's food. What we're talking about is synthetic things that have been chemically treated. They systemically put the poison, the pesticide, herbicide in the seed of the corn. they are doing systemic fertilization. So washing them off does not do anything. What we're talking about is different words that are used for spirit. We are forgetting that the Greeks and the Romans and the Europeans are very spiritual in their own way. And they use spiritual words for things, such as fi and fa, which is the ancient word for devil or destruction. So when the giant catches Jack with his egg and the beanstalk, kind of nursery rhyme, he says fee fi fo fum he's calling on the devil or evil spirit to destroy Jack. It's a very spiritual story. But we don't get it because we don't know the culture. We know nothing about cave civilizations. So they're coming at the spirit of the child. What they teaching is to take at all costs. To take. But we never were taught to take in our culture. We give to nature, nature gives to us. That's called communion. But we're taught to take food and take the vitamins and minerals out of the apple and eat it. We're taught to take. And that's a different kind of spiritual concept, totally. We are in love with games that take through stealing and deception, which is called football. That's a game of deception, a game of taking real estate, taking land like they took it from Africa, took it from American Indians. They take that's why the Europeans like football. It's a game of stealing land. We don't we don't see that whole process. It's a game of how wet. to connive ammonia. We're trying to, as a chemical use to alkaline the system because they are very acid. When a baby has ammonia smell and pee, it's because they're very acid. So that that so that ammonia is trying to help them to be human to a degree of humanism, but it also slows down the movement there. It slows it down. Ammonia being an alkaline substance more or less slows it down. So they're not able to transmit thoughts as fast as we can 
which we call fast twitch muscles, which will allow us to be a better athletes because we have more fast twitch muscles, more melanin in our muscles. They have the least amount of melanin in their muscles, and muscles is what cause the fluid of the brain to go up the spine, spinal cord, which we call cerebral spinal fluid, which causes this lymph fluid to move. It's moved by muscles, and the muscles cause a pulsation reaction, which we call a contraction. That's, that's a rhythm, working on cycles per sections, and we call that inspiring. It puts you in the spirit. It makes you an inspiration. Because we're in spiral. Spiral is a circle. Inspiration in the circle of God. So we are more inspired. And they are less inspired in the spiral, in the circle of God, in the eternity. And that's what we're saying. We're saying that these words themselves are spiritual words. And we look at them as, oh, that's just a scientific word. No, it's not. They're talking about a deity. They're talking about one of their gods. You better listen to these people. So what happens is they're trying to become happy without using the melanin, trying to jump start or bypass the process of being one with God, in balance, in harmony, which would make you happy just breathing properly or eating properly because you're doing something in the holiness of God, so that makes you feel good because you're in your spirit, in the spiral, in your holiness. So people want to bypass all the work it does to be healthy by not lying, stealing, deceiving, committing adultery, masturbating, all that stuff you have to do to have yourself in the spirit, inspired. So they bypass that with some crack or cocaine or having a sex, a sex addiction or listening to some lick me up, lick me down or whatever the foolishness is. Because they're just trying to bypass the work it takes to be a human being. Oh, shit. Now, Brother Afro, now what is a biracial person uh, genetically? Genetically, impossible. Melanin is dominant. If a black man has a baby with a Chinese woman, that baby is a Negro. So hopefully, if they want to go through some DNA way of saying it, they can do that. But it's the same process. They're going to show a white gene that only white people have. They want to go through that. But if you have a black mother or father, you're black. Okay. And how can one develop an emotional vocabulary? The emotions start before you're born. Uh, that's when you have all the ingredients. You have your lungs, you have your brain, and you have anger, you have frustration, you have joy. You just have to nurture it a certain way. What happens is what you call the circle is unbroken. Understanding how you are nurtured and taken care of before you're born. If I can get to you before you're born, I can make you just as dysfunctional as I want you to be. It's just a matter of what trimester you want to stress the mother in order to deter the ability to develop that emotional thought process. In the womb before you're born, the baby has a full emotional vocabulary. Emotions come in what we call a neural net. They come in bunches like grapes. You can't have happiness without anger. You can't have anger without sadness. You can't have love. With All of these emotions are together. It's whether you're going to use them in the right ratio and proportion is the issue. Ratio and proportion is what we're talking about. So what has happened is that a mother is pregnant with a child which is an emotional bond because the child doesn't have to speak Chinese, Swahili, or Wolof. The ch child only speaks emotions. The father is pregnant with the mother and the child, and the child is pregnant with the two adults, keeping them as parents. So everyone in the process is pregnant in African culture. The child is pregnant with two adults, birthing them as, as parents, taking them through an emotional ritual, rites of passage, as the Germans would say. Because the child wants something, it changes his mood, which changes the mother's mood, which changes the behavior, which causes the father to react in a nurturing or loving way, which changes his behavior, and he in turn reflects that back to the mother, and the mother reflects that back to the child, which we call the circle that's unbroken. This is a natural process. So the mother and father are setting the limits to various emotions, giving you the positive and negative end of the emotion. Each emotion has a range of acceptance 
where it's good and outside that range is not good. Some people put happiness in the wrong place. They're happy in a bad relationship. They're happy lying. They're happy shooting crack. Happiness is outside of its range of a, a proportion that it should be. So happiness can hurt you when you have it outside of its range. So we have to know the limits of happiness and the limits of sadness. If you're sad when everybody else is happy, you say, why are you sad? We're having a nice time here. Sad is out of its range of acceptance for you. Sad can hurt you, but sad is okay when it's used in a balanced way. And the only way to get a balance of emotion about it is through a bond. We've got to enforce our culture just like the Arabs do. Oh, shit. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Africa, first I want to ask you about your time. I want to thank you for taking your time out away from your class. Can you answer one more question for us? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, my, my question here is, what can we do first to get back on the right track? Uh, at first, last, and always, it's just wash everything with my eye. No matter what it is, take it through a my eye bath. If it's chemistry, biology, your diet, you take it through my eye. You say, is this truth for my body? Is this just for my body? Is this reciprocity for my body? Take everything through a my eye bath. If you listen to science, you say evolution, you take it to a bath. You say, is this truth? And then the guy who wrote the theory said, this is not truth, it's just a fantasy. So if you're going to talk about evolution, you can talk about Mother Goose. Fantasy is a fantasy. Take everything to the Ma'at bath and you won't go wrong. But first you must understand Ma'at. What is truth? What is justice? What is reciprocity? What is harmony? What is balance? Everything has to go through that. And if you do that, you'll be on the right course. It's like in a European court, you're discovering the truth. You're discovering, we call it discovery in, in, in court cases. But in African court, you have the truth. You have my eye. You just want to know how well the person used my eye. Not where they were at 915 when someone was killed, but how well are they using my eye. We already have the truth. We already have the justice. We're not discovering it. So we have to take everything through this uh, kind of bath, as I would call it, washing it, and before we accept it in our body. That goes for food. That goes for relationship. Some relationships are going to cause you to have prostate disease. Some relationships are going to cause you to have fibroid tumors. Some men are walking fibroid tumor producers. That's what they do. They're so toxic. They cause a the woman to have fibroid tumors. you got to take everything to the bath. Just because you look good don't mean that much. I say. I have another question here from our radio listening audience. Uh, how can poor people eat right? Um, unfortunately, you're asking someone who was raised poor in the projects on government food. You can eat right. You can go in a regular grocery store and see beans. You can see brown rice. Get out of here with that talk. <laughs> you can go in a regular, and I do it all the time. I take black people into their regular grocery store and show them the beans. The brown problem right. with your personality or your spirituality, the diagnosing tools are there. The same ones that Pope Tip use. I have some from the Chinese and the East Indians and the American Indians. I'm using those same tools that kept people healthy for two million years before white people showed up. We were healthy people. We can claim that again. That's why I wrote the book, Holistic Self-Diagnosing. Everybody's got remedy books, but nobody's teaching you how to tell you what's wrong with you. And I have pictures to show you. This is what it looks like if you have fibroid tumors in your eyes. This is what it looks like if you have prostate disease in your eyes. Just a picture showing you how to diagnose yourself, empower you to take care of yourself so you can be free from medical oppression and the slavery that's going on in the medical industry. I say. And um, so right now, let's let the audience know exactly how they can go about getting that book in the best way possible. Um, you told us about your 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 email address, but would you give us that information one more time, Doctor? Okay, the, the site of getting the book is L L A I L A A F as in Frank R I K A at I mean dot com forward slash health diagnosis. That's Lyla Africa dot com forward slash self-diagnosis to get you the book. 
And if you need some information or want a consultation or want some supplements for fibroid tumors or cancer or weak kidneys, you can go to my email, which is L L A I L A A F as in Frank R I K A J U N O dot com. That's Laila Africa at Juno dot com. That's how to get a hold of me. I say, and that's fantastic. You just answered the next question, which was uh, after one made the diagnosis, uh, uh, were there strategies to help? Um, and you have strategies to help. Are those strategies in the book, or is that going to be um, a separate thing that they need to contact you directly for? Uh, no, it's in African Holistic Health, Raising Black Children, Vitamins from A to Z, my melanin book, all of those books are gives you remedies for health situations. But the book, Holistic Self-Diagnosing, is to help you diagnose the disease. And you can go in the herb store and know what herb to get and wherever you are. I'm not trying to make you dependent on me. I'm trying to make you dependent on yourself. i got to have you free. Well, I can get free. I say. I say. And, you know, it's very interesting what you said about um, we're in a war you said uh, when when we travel to other countries, we must observe their traditions, and uh, we need to become familiar with our own traditions so we can start living them and demand that others around us respect that as well. Um, that that when I was thinking about how would the audience come to learn about that, that brings us right back into African traditional spirituality. Those uh, those priests and priestesses out there who people associate only with doing readings, they also, um, and of course there are books and information, but uh, we, you're saying to us that we need to change our cultural lifestyle and not just simply what we eat sometimes, right? It is a lifestyle change. You can start with a diet, but eventually you're going to have to change your lifestyle. Dr. Africa, once again, from all of the, um, from all of us at the Anu Nation and Spiritual Order, we want to thank you for taking this time out today, giving us your yeah, share. It's 24 minutes after the hour with the Anu Asapo Show, where Pan Africanism meets African traditional spirituality. And Brother Fa, Brother Ifa Wumi, I am still tingling from that interview you did with. With, uh, that we did with the doctor what information what, what knowledge a man is a walking it's more than an encyclopedia it's like a dictionary encyclopedia thesaurus all mixed up in the one Brad you did a great job um, what was the thing that um, that surprised you the most about anything he said in that brother file what he said about biracials and melanin. That kind of stuck out. For me, too. For me, too. Yeah, I say. We are back. We are We are with the Infundi. Um, they have hung in there, and we're happy to buy. We're going to talk to them a little bit more about their personal experience, and we're going to ask them also about their reaction to the interview. Um, Sister Roxanne, are you still there? Yes, Brother William. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was quite an interview, wasn't it? Okay, okay. Um, Sister Roxanne, we are having a little technical difficulty. Um, we had some static there. Are you still there? I'm still here. Okay, yes, yes. Brother Jeffrey, are you there? I'm here, brother. Okay, he's all the way from Japan. Wasn't that an incredible interview with Dr. Africa? Yes, it was, brother. I, I think uh, one of the things that most stuck out to me when he was talking about the uh, addictions and uh, uh, to different things and how these GMOs are affecting uh, our children and ourselves, uh, that that was the most uh, it stuck out to me. The most.